Aloha and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Got Your Six podcast. This six-question podcast brings together high performers to share their methods, strategies, and ideas delivered in an informative and, most importantly, actionable way that will help you lead yourself and those around you from the battlefield to the boardroom. Coming to you every episode, I'm your host, Tony Nash. And into the breach. Nothing mentioned on this podcast is an endorsement or opinion of the Department of Defense. I got your six, we got your back. Got your six, we got your back. Got your six, we got your back. I got your six. Today we have Mike Lyons, who's a former United States Army major, servant leader, global executive, and public speaker. Since 2003, Mike has been a military and national security analyst and contributor to CBS News. Aside from national defense issues, he is passionate about foreign policy and leadership. He has exceptional communication skills at every level of an organization and is an adept at managing situations of high visibility projects. A non-resident fellow of the Modern War Institute at West Point, he also gives various interviews and has written multiple articles on military policy and national security. He believe, Mike believes having a solid mentor is critical to managing one's career and that the leader is responsible for creating an environment where people know how to act in the absence of direct guidance. He is currently the managing, major gifts officer at the West Point Association of Graduates. He is also the COO of MIA Advisors, and he is an off-ice official from the National Hockey League and previous chief of staff of Verizon Global Security's cyber team. He's a 1983 graduate from the United States uh, military Academy at West Point and deployed in service of our nation in Operation Desert Storm. Mike, welcome to the show. Tony, great to be with you. Thanks so much for having me today. This I've been looking forward to this one for a while, so I'm really excited. I know you, you you've even though you've been away and kind of hung up your boots, as we like to say, um, you've remained close with the military throughout. After your, you know, you, after you, like we said, hung up your boots. Is there one thing that you implement daily from your time in the military, whether it's from West Point or anything? I'd, I'd really be interested to hear what that is. Yeah, you're going to laugh when you hear me say this, but uh, I get up every morning. I make my bed. <laughs> there you I go. still do. I think, you know, and then it was funny when uh, Admiral McRaven wrote that book uh, about it. I thought that was pretty funny because um, I do. I've always thought about that. My, my parents, my mom always instilled that in me. And uh, it's a weird little thing, but you get up every morning, you make your bed, you at least you start the day with a win. And then right. uh, if the day does not go well, you're going to climb into a nice bed where you can peel the covers back. So right. I don't know if that's uh, what you wanted to hear, but I mean, that's kind of the smallest things. No, look, I, 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 I thank you for that bio, that introduction there. And I've, I've tried to stay close to my military roots, um, started with my parents, started with my coaches when I was a kid. I was blessed to serve in the, in the military, blessed to lead troops in combat. Uh, and I just, I think about it every day. I think about that responsibility. And, and you know, I think about those who came before me, those that, uh, that were on that beach in, in June 6, 1944, those were in, in Gettysburg, yeah. you know, and I try to be a worthy citizen of that sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah, and that's awesome. It's one of those things like you you feel like you're standing on the shoulders of giants, uh, and then people look to you the same way. So that's got to be that's got to be really cool. Um, you talked about having that win in the morning. I'm sure there's been some failures along the way. What failure has ultimately led to your greatest success? Would you say? Yeah, you know, a couple of different things. Um, most of them in business, I'd say. You know, the, in, in the, the environment is different than it is in the military. The military, you've got that structure there. But I think you've got to always be able to regroup and you, know, you bring that skill from the military about, you know, you're never out of it. You're always going to try to win. And uh, I was able to take a company um, very, very fortunately that we were on the precipice of bankruptcy. Our, our parent company went bankrupt and we were, would have likely have laid off about 200 people. And I just was not, in, I was not willing to let that happen. I just was not willing to let 200 people go on the street. So I, I did like a overnight weekend marketing plan. I called everybody I could find and I did what I can do. And I was fortunate enough to be able to find a buyer for our company, uh, bought out of bankruptcy. I saved about 175 jobs, wasn't able to save all of them. Some, some people took kind of a package and went, but the bottom line is, um, you know, I was, it, 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 made, it made me assured that, um, you know, you just can't ever give up on a situation like that, especially when, when things look, look look really bad. So I, I was glad to do that. I was glad I was able to pull that off. Um, I had a little bit of luck involved, but that, um, but again, that's probably the thing 
that I've turned to most that when things are bad, I could, I always look back and say, look, you know, that during that situation, we were able to do something like that. There's always something you can do to, in order to make things uh, go well. Oh, absolutely. And then that never like give up and you can always do something. Does that come from like a book, a course, a mentor, some sort of communication you've, that has really like influenced you throughout your life or where does that kind of come from? So I think, so it's learning how to win. And, and I think that I was fortunate to have an upbringing around coaches, you know, sports are a big part of my life. You know, I work for the National Hockey League now and I played football, I played hockey, I played lacrosse. I was recruited at West Point to play lacrosse. And I, I just was blessed in high school to have coaches that taught me how to win and that process of winning. Um, you know, you know, there's a Lou Holtz uh, seminar about winning that he talks about winning actually stands for what's important now. And, and what happens is you set these goals and, and you and, and you want to achieve them, but then you've got to focus on what's important now to, in order to win. And, and I think, you know, I look at the society. I know the teams I've coached the past few years. I teach my boys and girls how to win and, and mm -hmm. why it's important to win. And you want to win. Uh, while participation is important, of course, um, I guarantee we'll have fun, more fun if we, if we win the game. Now, there's, you know, winning on the level and making sure that everything goes with that. It's not a win at all costs or anything. So I think that's where it came from. And, and it just has fostered in me. I try to project that to other folks that I work with and around. Um, and you make that commitment to, to winning and that commitment to excellence. You just, you know, the, I, I say the bar is high, right? The, yeah. the bar is always high and, and acting. And, and I you know, you appreciate it when you talked about it in my bio there. I always feel acting in the absence of guidance. You should be able to create that organization that knows, knows what to do. So for example, I, you know, I'm in the service business and, a customer has a problem, I, I should be able to tell one of my employees, let's go down there and figure it out. Unscrew yeah. it. See what's going on. Act. You know what you know what the right answer is. Figure it out and get to that right spot. You, you create a culture if you're the leader in that environment in order to make that happen. Yeah. And that culture is so important, right? And sometimes you don't know what right looks like because the problem is so complex, but you know what wrong is. Um, yeah. And being able to get away from that and move towards some some sort of like mutual understanding and, you know, common goals, really critical. Um, as you talk and continue to work with, you know, in the service business, is there a new belief that you've kind of picked up over the last five years or so or behavior or habit that has greatly improved your life? Well, I think we've, we have to adjust to the forces that are acting in our lives these days and all the different yeah. places where we get our news, for example, and social media and, 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 and how many things are kind of pounding us, you know, in a lot of different ways and, and how you got to bounce certain things off and, and absorb things that are important. It's like it's like anything else, that whole expression about, you know, the, the things in your life that are glass balls and making sure that you juggle them and make yeah. sure they go well. Uh, but the only other thing I could say is um, I think the leader always has to look over the horizon and always mm -hmm. has to see what there's a tsunami coming and and be able to put themselves and their their unit, their organization, whatever they're with in a position to succeed at that moment and not necessarily in, in the current moment, but like, you know, what's going to happen down the road. So I think that's, a, that's something I've always you know, tried to do. And, and especially, especially in combat, especially in those environments where um, there's a certain amount of predictability to it. And today it's a lot more difficult. No question about it. You got to stay more competent, more committed as ever in yeah. order to your task um, and be a continuous learner. I'd like to think, you know, as much as I'm out of school for as long as I've been, I get up every day and try to learn something new every day. If mm -hmm. I could do that, then I add, I, I, I close this gap between no knowns and no unknowns, right? I, right? You have things that, that I, you know, I, things I know, I know you can't talk me out. I'm good on that. And then you have the things I don't know. And I spend my life trying to find out and close that gap. And I keep, keep moving stuff into yeah. that no known pile, but uh, you know, it's going to take a long time for it's for that thing is totally filled up. Right. And that's a really interesting point you brought up about constantly learning. So I'm sure there's got to be some sort of skill or ability or even talent that you're currently working on um, that you feel like, you know, brand new at. Is there yeah. You know, I think that um, just basic community, even communication skills, you always have to work at it. I, you know, I, I literally walked off the street and got a job as a TV military analyst um, mm -hmm. with CBS news and, uh, and pay and everything. And, you know, we didn't, you and I didn't take broadcast journalism at West Point, you know, we didn't have right. any of that, that kind of training. And so, you know, you kind of learn on the fly and you kind of try to, you know, you, you, you're trying to look around and, and, and on top of that, we, you know, you and I are also used to a little bit of the feedback loop, right? You know, yeah. you know I have no problem 
tell me the facts, right? And if the facts are, I'm not making it, you got to tell me because I want to make it. I want to do what they can. And you, you, I'll tell you right now that that culture is not like that because it's very competitive and, you know, they don't, they're not very, you know, giving and stuff. They'll just keep you going as long as you're getting ratings. It's kind of a, kind of a weird thing. Yeah. Um, but, but anyway, I, you know, you're, you're always have got to be looking for, you know, things. I, I communication is always so important. Um, adjusting to it for your audience, I think is most important. I think also I, there's unfortunate, Tony's there unfortunate fault lines in our society. And I think, you know, you, you, you look at the media, I seem to be focused on what I'll call a race fault line that exists, mm -hmm. you know, between that, that, that gets propagated and created. But I think a, a, a more um, evident one is, is the fault line generations and generationals and, 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 and where people are in different ages and, sure. and how society has to run and how people feel about it. So you always got to be aware of those different fault lines and, and make sure you're talking the language of your audience and not talking the language of you to trying to get them to come to you. Yeah. And then how do you, how do you do that? Like in practice, as you like work on these communication skills and like you said, sometimes that feedback loop that we're so used to in the military and the reviews just aren't there. It's time you get that, like, just keep doing what you're doing. And it, which I think is it, like, to me, uh, getting that feedback is like crushing because it's, it doesn't allow me to grow. It just says, you know, you, you're maintaining yeah. the standard. Yeah, I think it's, uh, but it's, and at some point you're right. And that's where you, you look for other folks. You try to get outside your circle uh, and, and get it from others if you can. Um, but that's where you also have got to have this burning inside desire saying, look, I know I'm on the right path. I know I'm doing fundamentally the right thing. Right. Um, and, and to be satisfied with that on, on some level, look, you, you, I, I quote about Abraham Lincoln in the civil war saying, you know, he thinks he's doing the right thing. And if not, you know, 10 angels in hell saying he wasn't, doesn't matter. And that's really what, what yeah. it's at. You, you know, you get up every day, you try to move the rock forward and you do the right thing. No, that's awesome. So, and that, and that leads into like the last question of the piece of this is like, how are you better every day? Is it because you find that burning desire when you wake up and go make your bed, you're just ready to go? Like, how do you push through those days where it's a little bit harder? How do you say you're better than yesterday? Yeah, you know, it's a good question. And, and some days, you, you know, you, you I, I, I'm a goal oriented person. So I start out with a couple of things I know I want to do at the beginning of each day and know what I have to get done, know what's important, what's important now, and then yeah. what I've got to do. Um, and then always, you know, kind of pivot towards that. There's always going to be something that's adjusting to that. Um, I, you know, there are days where you just, you get set back also as well. Um, I, again, you look at the forces that act on you and what you can control. Yeah. Uh, I also spend a lot of time like mentoring folks, my, beside my children, I've got you know, two college age children. One, one, actually I totally failed as an army parent. I got a son in the Navy, oh, but we talk I'm all sorry. the time about, yeah, I know we talk, <laughs> we talk all the time about what it's like to be a junior officer and yeah. you know, how he's dealing with his, his sailors, um, and, and the like, and then it, with employees and, and, and the like. So, um, so yeah, I, I guess I don't necessarily, I wouldn't say I keep score every day. Um, I think that, I, I think, you know, you might, it might be too much energy to do that uh, on some level. It's just a matter of, you know, knowing full well that, you know, I, I don't go to bed at night if I got something that I didn't do though. I didn't finish, didn't close the loop, didn't send a text. I know this, I, you know, a friend of mine, I got, I, I meant to congratulate him. I didn't do it. Right. That's that, the beauty of communications. Now you can do it. I can send a text at nine 30 to somebody and 10, 30, 10 o'clock and say, Hey, Jeanette, I saw Ricky got accepted to West Point. That's awesome. I'm so, I'm so glad for you guys. I'm sure you're bursting with pride or something. So right. this, the, the communications allows us to do that these days. Yeah. And shout out to Ricky for getting into West Point. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. And sure. that, that piece that you said at the end, I think is people kind of overlook just taking the moment to shoot off a text to somebody and just say like, Hey, congratulations. And being able to stack that win and celebrate that with somebody, I think is something that we, we kind of take for granted. Um, but when I receive it, and I, I'm not going to speak for you, but I think we, we kind of agree on this one. It, it's so powerful just to have that like note of like congratulations or like just going in and celebrating with somebody else, their victory. Um, yeah. even if it's just real small and like a quick text. Yeah. And, and for sure. And that's where like, again, generationally, you, you know, you can't necessarily send a text to someone who's a little older or something, I, you know, right. the different, different generations want that they, they, they take that in different ways. And I see, so I think that um, that's a good example of where you got to know the, the mode of communication and know where to hit somebody up. I know I'm active on Twitter and I try to stay, I try to use Twitter as a way to engage people um, and, and to teach them 
about the military and, and, and the forces that are going on in the military. And, and I always try to engage people on Twitter and directly with it too. Uh, you know, it, it, it can be a cesspool of, of, of things at times, but I, I just don't yeah. use it that way. I use it as a way to, to, to educate and inspire people to learn more about the military. Right. And that's one of those things too. It's like going back to the feedback loop, garbage in, garbage out. But if you're putting, looking for good, putting out good, you're most likely going to receive it back in kind. Which yeah. goes back no, to I think so. And, and yeah, and, and again, um, like I said, you and I desire that feedback. You know, you and I know leadership is all about telling somebody the facts. Yeah. And, and the facts are some, you know, sometimes the facts are you ain't making it. And that's, it's okay. We don't, it's not that we don't, we're not going to toss it overboard for that, but let's figure out how to make it. You know, there's a, there's a coaching element there. There's, um, you know, there's the, the pace setting element. Also, we just got to lead by example, you know, I'll lead by example every day, obviously, but making sure that, that they're doing exactly what you want them to do. Um, all different kinds of leadership. I, I think that, that the key, you know, the leadership is implying the right style in order to get that right result. And that's, this is where I think sometimes the military gets a bad rap because everybody thinks, you know, you and I, when we're in the military, we order people around. Like I order right. you to do this. I mean, I, I didn't order anybody to do anything. You know, yeah. I didn't order. I, you know, you did something because it was the right thing to do. And, and we all had to do it. So you, you and I know that. Yeah. And that type, that understanding as a coach, as a leader, your athlete or your soldier and what works well for them goes back originally to that communication piece, right? Understanding your audience, knowing yeah. what works and doesn't work. Somebody might be driven by something else intrinsically. Someone else might be, you know, goal oriented because they want to go home early uh, and have formation at 1500. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, I like like uh, th I like working. You know, you get people that you don't even have to say anything to them. They know, you know, something is half you know wrong. You come, you just come up and like, I know, I know, sir, I got it, I got it. Get, go, go, get out, get out of here. See you later. Goodbye, good luck. Right, like those guys are good to go. Um, you know, yeah. that that's always you know, uh, you know, I, I had a very special relationship with my first sergeant. Um, we're still close to the day. It's been thirty years uh, since we last worked together. Um, we had a big uh, call. Uh, for our 30 year reunion here for going to desert storm. And, mm -hmm. and I taught, I learned so much from that man and, and about how to be, I'm not one eighth the soldier that, that he was, but um, everybody did their, what I say to job, job, you know, uh, I did captain's work. He did first sergeant work, lieutenants to lieutenant work. Everybody does their job. And if we all do that, we'll be fine. Everybody stays in their lane. So I, I was blessed. I had that kind of influence. So. Yeah. And like you said, you sought that mentorship because that doesn't always work like that. Sometimes people think like, Hey, I, I know what I'm doing stay away and then we'll yeah. we'll figure that out but you you were able to identify like there's i have gaps in coverage i need some help uh and asking for that is it takes sometimes an eco check but you're able to do that and it just benefits the whole organization yeah and i, I you know i always I, I i commanded a battery for two years that was unheard of back wow. then and it's because of desert storm um and so it was the best job i ever have i'll never have another job like it and, and it was funny because there, there were times I know that, you know, my boss was sometimes try to even separate my first sergeant from myself and what we were doing. And I never let it happen. I, you know, take a quick story. He would say to me, uh, oh, Captain Lyons, so what would you like to do on the, with the formation, uh, you know, this weekend? Do you want to you know, do something? And I'm like, well, let me go talk to first sergeant and see what he says. He goes, well, aren't you committing that battery? What about what you, what you, what do you think? And I'm like, I don't know. Let me go talk to a first sergeant. Right. And then, and then he goes, well, well, I already talked to your first sergeant. The first sergeant wants to do this. And I go, well, okay, that sounds good to me. And then he would get all mad at me. And I'm like, I'm like, sir, why do I want to argue with, this is not a point to be arguing over about, you know, what we want to do. It's more, he's, first sergeant's going to have to execute on the mission anyway. So yeah. doesn't it make sense that I, you know, we, we get him in, in the loop and stuff. If it's not illegal, immoral, or has drugs involved, like what difference does it make, you know? Yeah. So so we, you, him and I used to joke about that all the time, that we were just always on the same page. And that's right. just because we always respected each other's lanes. We always respected each other's places. And, and uh, it was just a really, really special moment. And, and again, we were able to take all our guys. Kind of, we, had, we had a reunion last uh, in February after 30 years of, of uh, ground combat. And we had about 50 guys, 50 had like 120 guys show wow. up on it. It was just great. I mean, it yeah. was just. Uh, everybody was transported back 30 years ago. It was, it was a lot of fun. So it was good to go. So That's awesome. No, thank you for sharing that story. Um, again, sir, appreciate. Thank you so much. So you said people can find you on Twitter. Where else can they, can they engage with you, reach out? 
Yeah, Twitter's the place. I'm, I'm Facebook is kind of closed down for me, and, and um, I'm on LinkedIn as well on the business side. But uh, okay. but anything anything about leadership, Tony? I think what you're doing is fantastic. Um, I think Thank always you. having these conversations is is tremendous. Soliciting a lot of different opinions is so important. And and yeah, and 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 again, I don't necessarily have we'll have all the answers, but I, I hope I can point you to somebody that, that might if I can't if I can't help if that's the case. But I'm at major M A G Mike Lyons on Twitter, uh, try to stay there and engaged. Um, I also work uh, in the media. You'll see me on uh, Westwood One Radio, CBS News and other places. And I, I'm fortunate to be able to give my opinion out there. So it's great. Awesome. Mike, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for being a, a military dad, uh, kind of coming full circle. I know maybe not in the back, in the service you wanted, but <laughs> thank you so much. Really appreciate your time. Thanks, Tony. Thanks for having me. I don't know what you've been told, Sixers, but the lawyers would like us to remind you that the views, opinions, and comments expressed on the Gotcha Six podcast are solely those of the hosts or guests to include current and previous Department of Defense employees and should in no way be considered the opinions of or endorsements on behalf of the Department of Defense or any of its components, divisions, contractors, or other current and previous staff members.